It's five o'clock in the morning and we're in the queue for the Malvern Flea Market. I always enjoy coming to Malvern. It's one of the biggest flea markets in the country and you're always guaranteed thousands and thousands of customers through the gates. There's always a sense of nervous energy on the day of a market, especially when you're queuing up to go in. You may have spent the week sourcing stock or searching through your death pile and your storage to find the right kind of stock to take to that particular type of market, because you do have to judge the type of customers that are going to walk through the gates in relation to the type of stock you take. It's no good taking high-end antiques to a flea market and equally it's no good taking flea market stock to a high-end antiques fair. So you're basically wondering what the day ahead holds in store for you. There are some dealers that have an air of excitement about the day and there are other dealers who are apprehensive about the day ahead. I'm probably halfway between the two. I look forward to the markets. I always do reasonably well at least cover my costs and make a profit, which at the end of the day is the, uh, the sole aim of the exercise, if you're a full-time dealer anyway. So, yeah, it's, uh, I, I really look forward to the, the markets, and particularly Malvern. As I said earlier, it's, it's one of the biggest in the country. You're always guaranteed to get thousands of people through the gates, but it's all about who comes through the gates, and those one or two people that can make the difference to your day by buying the uh, the higher priced items where you've got the better profit margin. But equally, you can turn over a lot of stock that perhaps you, you've been carrying for a while that isn't selling online. You can always um, drop the price down at the end of the day. When they're gone, they're gone and that money's in your back pocket, ready to spend or invest in other stock to hopefully do better with. So yeah, so let's, um, let's park up and see what the day has in store for us. It was about seven o'clock before they let us in. So by eight o'clock we'd set up um, fairly standard layout, two six foot tables. Good to uh, always put higher items at either end just to frame it. A couple of three tarps on the floor for the larger items. A nice pair of yellow Italian designer chairs. Peaky Blinder original painting. Two vintage industrial engineers cabinets. I like to decorate the tables with the flags. It adds a bit of colour to attract customers. Original vintage wooden apple crates. Some enamel pots and pans, a brass log scuttle and a set of Metropolitan Art Museum essay books. Here we have some 19th century Victorian watercolours. Krusty the Clown doing his job as security. A lovely boxed early 20th century microscope with six lenses. They sell well so uh, I was hoping that would sell uh, quite quickly. Uh, ceramic terracotta horse's head. Nice uh, copper fender. They come in and out of fashion. I think I'm gonna to have to polish that up to sell it. On the left, you can see a white mid-century Scandinavian tulip stall. And next to that is an industrial document rack. Um, Bottom right corner is a Singer sewing machine in its original case. We have some uh, letters in the box just above that. A few random vintage tins. And finally, top right, you can see uh, an industrial green cabinet. So there we go. It's all laid out. And uh, we'll have a little look now at what's sold. First to sell was a collection of rackets. I'd been carrying these around with me for quite a while, so I was relieved to sell them to one buyer. Second item to sell was a boho Scandinavian rag runner from the 1960s or possibly the 70s. This was an interesting couple of sales. 
two educational boards, one featuring the development of the frog, and the second was a detailed introduction to reptiles, and again, they sold to one buyer. This highly decorative gothic steel chandelier with glass prisms sold quickly. A 20th century oleograph of the Madonna and Child. These are good sellers. This is a military style steel green document rack. The biggest sale of the day was this original Peaky Blinders painting. This went to a buyer in Hales Owen, so staying fairly local to Birmingham. The Singer sewing machine in its original box sold to another dealer and uh, I sold it to them at trade. The lights microscope went to a collector and a restorer, so I'm really pleased that went to a good home. This was one of a pair of gilt tin candelabras, again sold both of them to the same buyer. So the rest of these are sales that I've made over the last week or so. They weren't sold at Malvern, but uh, I just thought I'd show you anyway to give you an idea of the kind of items that are selling. First up, we have a highly decorative, hand-painted and rustic Dala-style Swedish horse. We also sold a brass Buddha. It's a hollow casting and originally would have had a prayer inside it, sealed in by a cap. This antique, or possibly vintage, Arts and Crafts Copper Cauldron is signed by H. Barnes and it was made in the forge at Thornton Le Dale in Yorkshire. Interesting sale here, this hand-painted ghost train sign, Hell 666 below. A lovely little hand-painted work stall was sold to a customer in London. This retro fire bucket also went down south to another customer in London. Over the last two or three weeks, I've sold seven Evertort stalls. These sell extremely well, so if you ever see any, snap them up and put them up for sale. I've also sold a pair of laboratory test lights that have been converted for domestic use. These were the biggest sale of the last couple of weeks, a pair of antique plantation chairs. Now, it's not shown in the picture, but the arms swing out, enabling the user to rest his or her legs on them to have their boots pulled off. This lovely little ebonized stool also sold. A small sale, but they all add up. A tiny arts and crafts copper egg cup. Here we have a retro brass log scuttle with a folding handle and this went to a customer up north. Industrial items still sell well, and this was a five drawer industrial steel cabinet. Here we have a nice arts and crafts copper cauldron. Could be European, and this sold within days of being listed. This wooden LMS model train sold and went abroad. This 1970s Scandinavian or G-Plan style hostess trolley went to somebody setting up a home office. As I mentioned earlier, industrial items still sell well and here's a grey vintage document rack that sold again within days of being listed. And finally, a lovely pair of antique barley twist candlesticks with copper drip trays. So there you go, a quick recap of a day selling at Malvern and a little update on additional sales made over the last couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed the film. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified when I'm releasing my next film. I've got some packaging to do now, so take care, stay safe and I'll see you next week.